<laughs> yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Just go ahead and start. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, so how it all like kind of happened, right? It was like right after we got married, right? We had talked about it, but it wasn't like in depth. You know, it was just kind of like a, you know, we'll see as that time comes. But, you know, life happens, you know what I'm saying? It's like we go through year two, year one, you know, and we're at year three and we're having these conversations. And it's kind of like before we got married, we got, we actually both went to the doctor. And that's when we found out she had a cyst and she ended up having to have surgery on that cyst. Um, so they had to kind of scrape her ovary to get the cyst. So that dropped her egg count. And with that, you know, prior to what we, when we got married, the doctor was like, well, if she isn't pregnant, by the time she walks down the aisle, then, you know, the chances y'all ever getting pregnant are like slim to none, basically. We were told that, you know, you would have to do like in vitro or freeze eggs. They gave us all these options. But all them options are super expensive. And it was like, nah, we good. <laughs> you know, like, uh, we gonna make this thing work with me, you, and Carson. You know, and we got Bianca, our dog. So, you know what, we, we good. And, you know, from that point on, you know, it was more about like, you know, just finding ourselves in the marriage and, you know, really just enjoying each other, you know, making sure Carson was good. And, you know, we did a lot of traveling, a lot of hanging out. And unbeknownst to us, you know, that's kind of crazy how, you know, God worked. You know, COVID happens. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. There are fears a rapidly spreading virus has reached Australia. This is a rapidly emerging situation where there is not a cause for alarm. The first US case has been detected. There's confirmation the coronavirus has reached Australia. Right, and so now, you know, I just got a job with Microsoft and I'm working from home. And I got all this stuff that they deliver in and and I'm like, look, we need more space because I'm in this small little bedroom <laughs> trying to work. And so here we go. You know, we went out to Trees Farm out there in DeSoto, new subdivision and everything. And just on a whim, just started looking at houses during COVID. And to be honest with you, we didn't know what would happen. But then we, you know, went and talked to them. Like, hey, so here's what we're thinking. Here's this, 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 and that, you know, her credit was way better than mine, just putting that out there. You know, but I mean, <laughs> we worked together to get mine up. And then once we went to go talk to him, everything just kind of fell in line. Um, we found a house that we wanted to kind of build. And from there, everything just kept mismoving. You know, I was able to, it was funny for me because I work from home, right? So I got to go out there all the time to kind of see how everything was going how the bill was going and all that good stuff. And so we get out there, right? The house is built, we're in. We moved in the summer, July, I think. But um, we're in there and now we, you know, here comes our anniversary. So three year anniversary, we, we went to Napa. And like, we having fun, like we hitting all the wineries, traveling and all that good stuff, drove over to San Francisco. And she was like, well, my period still ain't came. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever. You know, we get back and her period still hasn't come. And so she's kind of nervous and like, you know, I don't think I'm pregnant, but you know, maybe it's another cyst. So she got, starts kind of going through, I guess what she said was her checklist of ruling stuff out. And the first one, it was just to, you know, take a pregnancy test. And um, she went and bought two. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm in there watching the game. She, uh, you know, comes out and was like, hey, you need to see this. And I'm just like, see what? <laughs> you know? So she like showed me the test and she was like pregnant. And I'm like, I'm not gonna take the other one. You're like, you bought two, right? And like, <laughs> and you're like, mm mm. Because, you know, we know what the doctors told us. And so then she takes the second one. You know, a little while later, you know, drinks some water, or whatever. And she comes back and was like, it's pregnant again. And I'm just like, like, so. Well, you know, like, I really don't know how to, because I'm looking at her, like, how you feel right now. So, y'all, I can't make this up. She asked me, and this is like 11 o'clock at night, go to Walmart and get another test. I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, like, so now I'm in Walmart, and the pregnancy tests, they're locked. So now I got to ask somebody. 
So now, like, there's nobody around, and the guy who I found had to go ask somebody else. So now they're paging people over the intercom. We have a guy, a customer, in uh, the pregnancy aisle that needs a test. And, like, like, three times, and I'm just like, bro, like, what is happening right now? But, all right, we get the test, and um, she takes it, and it's pregnant again. And so now it's kind of like, oh, crap. Yo, this is real now. And so we call the doctor. Um, they go, she does the blood test, pregnant. And it was just like, I, we both were kind of just like in this state of shock because it was just like, you, this wasn't supposed to be a thing. You know, we were pretty much reserved to the fact of me, her, Carson, and Bianca. So now it's like, wow. You know, she's nervous. I can tell she's nervous. She, you know, and I'm trying to calm her down. And then we go for the first actual doctor visit. And, you know, they show, like, the, you know, they, the um, ultrasound. And you see this, like, this little thing. And it, like, became, like, super real. Like, oh, there's something in there. <laughs> you know, and it was like, what do you say to that? Because, you know, all these emotions start to happen. And it's like, Yo, God really, you know, if he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You know, because we just didn't think it could happen, just to be honest with you. You know, and we kind of found ourselves in a place of we're going to be us. You know, and it's so funny because while we were in Napa, we were actually planning our next trip. We was like, man, we should take Carson to Washington to, you know, the museum there. And that is like totally went out the window. Like, (laughs) he... It's crazy that, you know, you could think of the things that could have happened and what happened. You know, and it's amazing to kind of just be in this space right now because you just didn't think it was a possibility. And like, you know, we were reading our devotional and that was the question. And it was like, I can't give you a verse because I can look back on life and tell you every situation I've ever been that was a negative or I had to face adversity. I can tell you that God had his hand on it because I always came through better than what I went into, even if I didn't understand why or what was happening at the time. Like, I ain't really, you know what I'm saying, why would that happen if I haven't done anything negative or anything to make it happen? But every situation, bro, has been like just a blessing that I've built from. I've been able to come out better than I went in, even with this, because, you know, with Adrian, like we believed that it wasn't possible, you know, and I know that she felt, because we had these conversations that I never wanted her to feel like she was less than, or, and she's even said, I don't want to be a disappointment. And I told her, you were never a disappointment to me. You know, I never married you for what you could give me. I married you for you. But to know that, you know, what we were told and for it to be here, that's nothing but God. Everything that happened, I can't say anything else, but it was other than God because I know what we've been through. I know what we were told. And like, I'm just so happy to be in this space with you, to be able to do it with you and what we're going through because, I mean, what, what else can you say other than what God said was gonna happen was gonna happen. You know, we moved into a new house. We didn't know what was happening, but every obstacle that was in our way was moved out our way without us even knowing. You know, brand new house, all this space. All, I got my man room, so they ain't going nowhere. You know, you got to figure out your, you know, your workout area, but hey, that's on you. But, you know, we have so much that was moved and then we didn't even know what's working for us. And like, we're here. And I'm just, I'm so grateful because when I think about all the situations, everything that we went through, all the conversations, the tough, the tough moments about even talking about having kids and you telling me that you were afraid, you know, and now here we are. And nothing can change what's about to happen because it was supposed to happen. It was supposed to be this way. And that is, without a doubt, God. Without a doubt, that's, that's what was supposed to happen and when it was supposed to happen. Yeah, when you find out that, you, you know, they were telling us, hey, you know, this is not going to happen. And what you told me was like, hey, I don't want to be a disappointment to you. And what I told you, you could never do that because you've given me everything that I ever wanted. You know, I didn't marry you for what you could give me. I married you for you. Oh, and that has been, like, I think one of the, the key things that always keeps us together. No matter what, 
no matter what we do, no matter what situation has come, it's because you see me for me and I see you for you. And at the end of the day, nothing can change that. And that's kept us together. Like even in the midst of, I know this year has been tough for you because I know you lost your uncles from COVID and heart attacks and things like that, you know, but at the end of it, man, we're here. You know, everything came to a, this is it. At the end of the year, we're celebrating life. You know, like death has come and I hate that, you know, but that's, that's the world we live in. But the beauty of it is we're here now celebrating life. And I know that your Uncle Key, Pete, they would love that moment. They, you know, they, they love that. And I love it too. You know, so I'm just, I'm, um, I'm grateful because it didn't have to be this way. You know, it just did. And it is. And we have people around us. Sorry I lied to you because I told you I was going to Will's house, you know, but I'm here doing this for you for Christmas. But I really wanted you to know that it means so much to me that we're here and I'm just with you. You know, I'm here, whatever you need, I'll be here to give you that and support you. And I'm just looking forward to this next journey with you, this next chapter.